This side, Rahul Magan here is the Chief Executive Officer of Treasury Consulting LLP. And today we would be covering a very technical topic which is Hedge Accounting CDS Offsetting with Account Receivable. We very well understand that at onset this topic looks very difficult but the reason why we are covering this topic is basically we are getting a lot of calls uh, across the globe that uh, the, uh, in fact uh, consultancy also which we are generating that people have AR in the books. AR stands for account receivable and people wanted to hatch that AR. Basically people wanted to hatch that account receivables and sometimes they do take, do take CDS also. But they are not being sure how to take the hedge accounting of the hedge accounting of that. The most unfortunate part which we have as of now as far as the accounting standard is concerned as far as the plain vanilla instrument is concerned accounting standards are very good you name it the forward contract the option contracts the swap contracts the hedge accounting part is very much defined you know either it is a quantitative part or it's a qualitative part but as far as this uh, the credit derivatives are concerned example securitization credit default swap, you know, CDOs and CMOs, CBOs and a lot of others. Hedge accounting part is not very concretely defined. I was head of treasury, so we used to take such kind of instruments. So today we are going to cover that part. It's hedge accounting, CDS offsetting with account receivables. Now, here we are taking an example of a corporate called Google India. I hope there is no introduction which is required about the Google and at the onset, we are like to take an indemnification that the purpose of this video is only for examples. We really don't want you to distort the name of any company, any corporate or any name mentioned in our videos. It's only for the sake of examples. So that if you are taking the well names as an example, so that it's very easy for people to understand that because actually these companies are into that kind of business mode. Now, Google is a wonderful company. Not to mention about their business, I think one of the best technological companies after Apple. And I think if you compare Apple and Google are almost at par, right? Google is having subsidiaries across the globe. I hope a lot of people, those who are watching this video, they, they might be traveling a lot. Now, once you are traveling and you go to Singapore and you are opening a Google, actually you are looking at www.google.com. But once you open this page, you are automatically on the Google Singapore server. If you go to China, you would be on the Google China server. If you come to India, you will be on the Google India server. So here we are taking a hypothetical example how it actually works. Google India is an Indian subsidiary of an American setup, which is Google US. So consolidation, which is the consolidation of the group level, is happening actually at the US level in dollar terms. That is a different fire, different fact that this consolidated consolidation is happening in uh, IFRS terms or it is happening in US GAAP terms, but consolidation is happening in dollar terms. Now there are four or five companies which we have across the globe. Like Google is there, Apple is there. You know, I would say to an extent. Um, uh, sorry, not to an extent. Google is there, Apple is there, Microsoft is there, and Facebook is there. These four, are com these four companies are there which are practically doing business everywhere across the globe. They are doing business everywhere. You just name it and they are doing. The, why they are, because they are doing business everywhere, they are, subject to, they are subject to exposure of each currency. Now, if you are going to US, you can buy the Microsoft operating system in dollar terms. If you come to India, you can buy in Indian rupee terms. If you come to say Scotland, you can buy in Euro terms. If you come back again to Singapore, you can buy in Singapore dollar terms. So you can buy in, 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 in respective currency. Now, let's take an example. Google India is signing a contract. Again, we are taking a hypothetical example with TCS. Now, what is a contract? TCS wanted to reimagine their name and it's a kind of advertisement contract and TCS the size of the contract is 500 million dollar and that is for 10 years so approximately 50 million per dollar TCS India is going to be spending to reconfigure his image on the Google it could be via digital advertisement it could be via YouTube it could be via LinkedIn or it could be multiple ways we are not entering into that now as you very well understand that the IT industry is facing some issue again these all are examples TCS is not in a situation to pay and the DSO which is daily sales outstanding is growing. 
Now, as the DSO grow, it's an issue for Google. The reason being, Google India is serving TCS India. The amount being asked is $50 million per year for 10 years. This is $500 million for total 10 years. The first problem Google would be having is that the functional currency of the Google is in INR. On the other hand, the account receivable which the Google is generating is in dollar terms. So there is a currency exposure. Now that currency exposure which the Google have, that currency exposure is subject to an issue for Google which Google has to resolve. This will generate an issue of revaluation. Now what is revaluation? At the end of a month, Google India would be winding up their books and they would be converting the dollar AR into INR AR. Now, one month the rate is more, one month the rate is less and it keeps moving. So it would be an issue for Google that this revaluation would be hitting the debit or the credit side of the PNL depends. I repeat, this revaluation hits the debit or the credit side of the PNL, it depends. Now that is the first issue. Now, let's imagine that uh, after two years, the total outstanding AR in the books of Google is $100 million. Because $50 million of business they are doing per year for TCS, due to some issues in IT which is happening right now, TCS is not in a situation to pay and now the total outstanding is $100 million. Now Google wanted to protect the principal and here comes the CDS. Before moving further, let me clarify very, very, very clearly to you that if as an, as a, if from an Indian perspective, you are watching this video, then from this part till the end is not applicable to you. The reason being this instrument is not being prescribed by Reserve Bank of India. And as per Reserve Bank of India, they basically cannot, uh, as, as per Reserve Bank of India, they, uh, these, can, these instruments are not legitimatized. They are not a legitimate instrument or secondly, there is no buyers and sellers for that. So market is very, very limited. I think limited is, is the wrong word. The market is very scarce. We have, we, we, we do not have any market, right? It's country. Now, Google India would have a lot of option. They have option about, uh, you know, CDS single name, CDS multi name, CDS single trigger, CDS multi trigger. First, first till default swap nth till default swap and total turn swap the sequence is long the purpose of taking google india was very clear google is having a subsidiary in singapore and that everybody know which is google singapore now as you may well understand that taking cds in india is finding a needle in a grass you may find it, you might not find it, but there is a 99% probability that you will not find it. Now, Google Singapore in that sense would be playing two roles for Google India. The first role every month Google India, Google Singapore would be playing for Google India is that they would be selling, note very carefully, they would be selling non-deliverable forwards in the market. They could have sold non-deliverable option also. Now, the non-deliverable forward which they are selling would protect the revaluation gains and losses in the books. Ultimately, how it would happen? Now, I will take two scenarios because there are a lot of videos which we have of non-deliverable forward, how actually it works. Now, also liquidity swap, you can check these videos on our YouTube channel. Now, how it works, in case you have revaluation gain here, which is Google India, you would be having non-deliverable loss, non-deliverable forward loss in Google Singapore or in case you would be having revaluation loss here, you would be having non-deliverable forward gain here. So ultimately the moral of the story is that once you consolidate your books, you would end up in a offsetting position. Now please be note that that offsetting won't be uh, because there is a time gap it won't be 100% but yes to an extent it would offset now this would impact PNL and this would impact PNL this is the first role Google Singapore would be playing for Google India but the problem which we are discussing this is another problem this comes after AR this is the problem of the CDS 
Now, Google India is buying a CDS via Google Singapore and assuming the CDS is JP Morgan Chase Singapore and assuming the quote which they have given is L plus 150 basis point assuming now since it is a 500 million dollar deal and assuming this is quarterly reset note me very carefully this is quarterly reset now sitting today the three months LIBOR is approximately 1.5 percent plus 1.5 now this 1.5 percent is a annualized so that quarterly we need to reset right exam in fact the complete has to be reset so this 3 divided 3 percent divided by 4 which is approximately 0.75 percent this 0.75 percent has to be paid which is 500 which is 3.75 million dollars supposed to be paid by Google India to JP Morgan Chase Singapore every quarter and of course they can hedge that because the price which they are they are charging is LIBOR plus 150 basis point and and Google India is subject to Google India is subject to two risk here the first risk Google India is subject to CDS is this floating rate and second risk which Google India is, we ha is having is the payment in dollar terms here now since we are taking an example of Google India here, Google India is having exposure in dollars. So it's a natural offset. Basically the revenue which they are generating in dollar, they are paying here. So that risk they are freeze. But if they want, they can hedge this risk in the CDS market. They can hedge, they can take a swap position here. If they want, which we are not discussing here in this video. So in this, this would be say CCIRS, cross currency interest rate swap, which we are not discussing here. Now in this what would happen here Google India is protected but the issue is not yet resolved. The issue is that the price the CDS price which Google India has taken is actually the TCS CDS the credit default swap on the on the TCS but did you ever thought did you ever got a chance to look at that there are two kind of CDS which we have across the globe. Just now in the video I told you that you have multiple kind of CDS, single name, multi name, single trigger, multi trigger and all. But apparently speaking from the hedge accounting perspective we have two type of CDS, CDS uh, contracts in, the, in this globe. The first kind of CDS contract is one they are attached with an index and one which they do not attach with an index. Now this CDS contract is not attached with an index. The reason being we are assuming that TCS rate is being quoted in the system. So the rate which we are getting from JP Morgan is actually a TCS rate which is being quoted. What would if at the place of the TCS we would have a company who is actually not quoted. Who is actually not quoted. In that, that sense we need to take a reference index. And that reference index could have we have multiple. Like take an example we have iTrax. In that sense, we need to take a reference index. Now, in that sense, the situation would be a little tricky. Tricky in the sense, if we would be taking a CDS on a company which is actually being not quoted in the market, we would be taking a position on a reference index, which is ITREX. And once we are taking a position on a reference index, which is ITREX, then as far as hedge accounting is concerned, this is known as embedded derivative. And the host contract and the derivative contract has to be bifurcated. Now Google India is actually facing four issues. Issue number one, the revaluation issue, which anyways they are resolving via non-deliverable forward. So this is not of much concern. Biggest concern is the CDS, which they are taking. Here Google India would be facing two more concerns. The one is they would be paying a quarterly reset at LIBOR plus 150 basis point. This LIBOR is a floating thing. So if they want, they can use a cross currency swap and they can hash that. That's up to Google, right? If they don't, if they're not interested, and another issue is the basically the dollar payment, which is say we as because currently quarterly LIBOR is one, one and a half percent, 
1 and half plus 1 and half which is 3 so total 3 divided by 4 because quarterly reset is 0.75 percent so total is 3.75 3.75 million dollar once they would be closing the books the PNL the PNL would have four issues issue number one is revaluation issue number two is the CDS MTM Issue number three is the non-deliverable forward and issue number four is the interest. CDS mark to market will never be treated as a cash flow hedge. Remember very carefully. All those people, those who have a misconception about that. CDS mark to market will always be treated as a fair value hedge. The reason why I'm saying this, using the technical term, why this is not a cash flow hedge and why this is a fair value hedge. The reason being, assuming after a period of time, TCS got an extremely big contract. The CDS premium, which was one and half percent, was reduced to one plus 50 basis point. In that sense, the mark to market gain would be generated on the CDS and that mark to market gain will not go in the OCI, it will come in the PNL. Assuming after one year the TCS situation worsened and the increase uh, worsened, in that sense, it will go to one point, it will go to two percent. In that sense, they would have a mark to market loss that will again go in the PNL. So, CDS mark to market is never be a cash flow hedge, it's always a fair value hedge. So, at the end of the book, Google India would be facing the revaluation issue. To mitigate the revaluation issue, they would be moving to Google Singapore. After moving to Google Singapore, they would be taking a serious position wherein they would have two options, which is LIBOR plus uh, uh, this 1.5%. Basically, the interest payment, that is quite good, right? Fourth is the CDS MTM. Although, before winding up this video, I would like to, uh, uh, like to agree uh, that basically, in the counting standard, it's not being very well written that, it's not being well written that, you know, uh, CDS, uh, basically the CDS accounting, either it should be cash flow hedge or a fair value hedge. But practically speaking, CDS cannot be cash flow hedge. It's always a fair value hedge. The reason being, if it being cash flow hedge, then the impact would be going in the OCI, which is other comprehensive income, which is technically not the case here. Impact will always go in the PNL. So, it's very easy to say that you are going to take a serious position sitting in India. But practically speaking, from a financial market point of view or from an accounting point of view, things are not very easy and very conducive as far as the, as far as the CDS with account receivable is concerned. On the contrary, if we would have taken an example of Google Singapore, things would have been pretty easy to take Singapore market because Singapore is one of the, one of the liquid market as far as the CDS is concerned. This is for today and uh, we hereby thank you very much for sparing your time. At the end of this video, we would like to tell you that our fixed income platform is maximum 10 to 15 days away. And it's one of the beautiful websites which we have made. It's too big that, uh, you know, it's apparently speaking, it's not being easy for a person to read each and everything. So they would be requiring a lot of time. Hopefully by end of next week, by next Friday, which is approximately 10 days from now, we would have our fixed income platform live. In case you would have any questions, you are most welcome to contact us 9899242978 while Skype ID is Rahul5327 while my email is rahul.magan at the rate treasuryconsulting.in my fixed income KPO number is 91401997749140019774 while website is treasuryconsulting.in and our fixed income website is www.fixedincome.global. Thank you and we will continue to have a lot of videos for your knowledge. Have a wonderful time ahead.